right, guys, I promised you a couple of quick examples of the Gram-Schmidt process, and I am going to uh, make this really quick for you. Uh, on class, in class last week, we derived the formulas for the Gram-Schmidt process. So if I start with vectors v1 and v2 and so on, the Gram-Schmidt process replaces those vectors with an orthogonal set w1, w2, and so on. So, uh, I just put the formulas over here. Remember that on the exam, I'm going to give you those formulas, so you don't need to memorize them. I'll write them down for you on the test. Uh, but we're just going to use them to do a couple quick examples, okay? The first one is right here. It says, find an orthogonal basis for the span of these two vectors here. These are two vectors in R4, okay? So, we can assume that we're using the standard inner product on this vector space. And I'm going to call this vector here v1 and the second one v2. Uh, you can do it in either order. It doesn't matter uh, which vector is first and which one is second because it's just any unordered list here. So just do it that way. And so then if we just follow this process, this is very quick, w1 is just the same vector as v1. So we we'll just write that down. Okay, and then for w2, we take v2, which is 1, 2, 1, 2, and we subtract, um, let's see, the formula, the inner product of v2 with w1, that's really just the inner product of these two vectors here, which is going to be 4, I believe, if you check it out, okay, using the standard dot product for r4. And then on the denominator, we have to put the norm squared of w1, which would be... Um, 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is also 4, okay? And we multiply that by w1, so negative 1, 1, 1, 1. Uh, 4 over 4 is just 1, so we literally just have to subtract here. We get 2, 1, 0, and 1. So this is w1, and this is w2. And we should be able to check that these are orthogonal to each other, so if we do the dot products of w1 and w2, we should get, we should get zero, okay? So there is an orthogonal basis. Remember, you can also make it orthonormal. Once you have an orthogonal basis, if you simply divide by the norms of these vectors, you could get a, uh, an orthonormal basis. So for example, the norm of w1 is, uh, it turns out it's two, Right, it's the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared. It's the square root of 4, which is 2. So if we just divide it through by 2, we would get a unit vector, right? And on this one down here, for w2, the norm of this vector is the square root of 6, right? So we could get a unit vector by dividing by the square root of 6. So uh, you, you don't need to simplify things very much uh, for me on this. You can just Write it down and we're good to go. Okay, so u1 and u2 would be an orthonormal basis. But w1 and w2 is an orthogonal basis, which is all we were asked to come up with. Okay, so that's one example. Let me give you a second example, uh, just so that I have shown you something with a different vector space than rn. rn tends to be a little bit easier because it's such a familiar dot product that, we, that we're using. Let's try uh, one more example uh, in a different vector space. Let's use c of negative 1, 1, and I'm going to use the usual inner product that we've looked at in that vector space, which is we're going to integrate from negative 1 to 1 of the product of the two functions that we uh, are finding the inner product of here. Okay, and so then here's the question. Find an orthogonal basis find an orthogonal basis for the span of 1x squared and x to the fourth. So this time I'm giving you three vectors to work with. And let me just label these as v1, v2, and v3. Okay? Well, there's nothing all that hard about this. It's just we have to be careful. It's kind of a tedious uh, set of formulas here that we have to work with. So that's the only thing to keep in mind. Okay, so of course W1 is just V1, which is just 1. That's easy. Okay. Uh, W2 
is just v2, so v2 is x squared minus the inner product of, well, it's going to be the inner product of v2, which is x squared, with w1, which is 1, over the norm squared of 1, and that will be times 1. So we have to calculate a few things here, right? We have to calculate these things. So let's just try and do that. We have x squared minus, so I have a numerator and a denominator that I need to work out. The inner product of x squared with 1, that's just going to be, I'm going to use some scratch work right here. That's just going to be the integral from minus 1 to 1 of x squared dx, right? And if you work that out, it comes out to 2 thirds, okay? So this integral evaluates to 2 thirds. So we have 2 thirds for that. Uh, and then the norm squared of 1, that's just the inner product of 1 with itself. So that's just going to be the integral from minus 1 to 1 of dx. And that, that integral is equal to 2. Okay? And then this is times the first vector w1, so you just get 1. Okay, so this is just x squared minus 1 third. Alright, I hope I'm not going too fast. It's just a lot of calculations, so... You know, if you want to stop and check all these integrals for yourself, uh, by all means go ahead. But it's nothing, nothing very deep here. So we have w1, we have w2. Now we have to come up with w3. Okay, I think I'm going to erase the first part up here because we know what the inner product is. And you can always rewind me if you need to. Um, so for the third vector, w3, I've got the formula over here. We're going to take v3, that was x to the fourth, and we're going to subtract the inner product of x to the fourth with the first vector, which was w1, over the norm of w1 squared, and then we're going to multiply that by 1. And then we have to subtract from that the inner product of, of v3 with w2. So now we have to, you know, we have to put this x squared minus 1 third in there. And then we have to do the norm squared of x squared minus 1 third. And then we will end up multiplying all of that by x minus 1 third. I'm simply writing down what this formula says in this example. Okay? And now you just have to, to do all of these integrals. And I think I'm going to uh, save the effort of working them out. Every single one of these things is just an integration. Right? So this one is x to the fourth. Uh, think about this with me for a second. When you integrate x to the fourth times one, right, you're going to get one fifth of x to the fifth. You have to evaluate that from minus one to one. It's just going to be two fifths. All right. So this is just going to be two fifths. Uh, this norm we already worked out before was just equal to two. Okay, and then that's times one. And then you have to do these other inner products over here, which again it just involves doing some integrations. So I think I'm going to save you the stress of that and just tell you the answers. On top here, you're going to get 16 over 105. <laughs> okay, the numbers aren't necessarily that nice. And on the bottom, you're going to get 8 over 45. Okay, and then that's times the vector itself, which would be, oh, this should be x squared minus 1 third. x squared minus 1 third, right? Okay, caught that. Um, yeah, so that's the expression. And now, of course, you could try and simplify that a little bit if you wanted to. But this is W3. I'm just going to leave it like that just to keep the video short and sweet. Okay, so W1, W2, and W3, those are your orthogonal vectors, your orthogonal basis for the span of 1x squared and x to the fourth. Okay? Um, I hope that all makes good sense to you. Uh, if you have any problems with the Gram-Schmidt examples that I'm going to ask you to do in the homework, uh, by all means feel free to come ask me. But it's mostly just plugging and chugging with these formulas that are right over here. Okay? Thanks a lot, guys. See you soon.